Good morning guys, we're back again today with another video here at We Ride New England. Uh, we got the new belt on the machine, it hasn't been rode yet, so we are going out to the pits. We're going to be doing some riding today, some break-in procedure, and uh, we got a whole lot to discuss as well guys. So stay tuned, let's get out there and have some fun. Alright guys, we are out here riding again today. We have the brand new belt on, no miles on it yet. I reset the, the trip there. And uh, let's get right out there and start breaking in this belt, doing some riding, and also uh, discussing a few things here. So far so good, seems to be riding nice and smooth.
right guys, so just for quick reference, as you can see where I ride out here, it's pretty moderately fast paced. I mean, I'm doing about 35 miles an hour on average, you know, kind of through the whole thing. And that's just me going easy right now, breaking in the new belt. Uh, I haven't really gone over, you know, a uh, quarter to maybe half throttle at all yet. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, we're at 1.7 miles now. Just kind of cruising out here. And you can watch my other videos, guys, normally. I mean, through these power lines, you know, anywhere from 40 to 60, really, wide open. And also, on that note, let's throw it in low gear for you guys real quick. Just for reference, because there seems to be a lot of people telling me that I should be riding in low gear more. Well, take a look around, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to kind of put around here. That's quarter throttle, the same I've been using this whole time. I'm doing eight miles an hour, nine miles an hour. That's half throttle now. And I'm doing about 19. You know, but obviously the engine's at a much higher RPM. And I'm only going 20 miles an hour. That's why everybody's riding conditions are different. For me, I need a lot of high gear. This is wide open, guys. Fast-paced riding. I'm not climbing up hills at, you know, 10 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour. When I'm cruising along at 35, 40, when I come up to a hill, I'm going up that hill at the same speed. I don't ride mud. I'm not mud bogging. I'm not going up, like, rock hills and tight, intricate stuff where I'm rock crawling in low gear, guys. This is all high gear riding. Wide open space. I got that on video. They're out here. Gotta love it, man. You never know what you're gonna see out here.
So guys, real quick, while we're up here, let's just have a quick talk about this machine. This Scrambler 1000S is marketed to be the most capable performance ATV on the market. There's nothing else of its kind with long travel suspension, 55 inch width, 14 inches of ground clearance, 14 inches of front suspension travel, uh, 14 and a half inches of rear suspension travel. I mean, this, this machine is built to be the most capable ATV. This machine is not built to be ridden gentle. I mean, this is an extreme ATV, arguably the most extreme ATV that's been built. You know, because there is, there's nothing else on the market like it. Um, I mean, so, you know, a lot of you guys are saying like, oh, you're riding it too hard, this and that, you're jumping it, you're breaking stuff. Guys, this is what it's built for. I mean, look at the suspension setup. This is literally what this ATV is marketed and built for. Extreme riding, fast riding, you know, hardcore riders, like jumping it, everything. You know, this isn't, this isn't uh, like a Honda Rancher, like what I used to have, or even my old TRX 400, 450. Um, I mean, I've had tons and tons of machines, guys. Tons of four wheelers, tons of dirt bikes, go-karts, you name it, I've had it, jet skis. This is an extreme machine with an extreme price tag, $15,000, okay? This is supposed to last and be durable and be ridden hard and be able to take that abuse. <clears throat> and it, honestly, it has. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, when I did jump it, I came down on the back right wheel. You know, obviously not on purpose. I didn't say, hey, let's land this on the back right tire and see if we can blow an axle. No, it, it happened. The axle snapped. The dealer deemed it was a weak component, which it could have been. Or it could have, you know, I'm hoping it's not going to blow every time I hit a jump. Because then this machine is not what they built it for and what they market it for. You know, this isn't the most extreme ATV. If you can't hit a jump on this thing without an axle blowing, what's the point in spending all the money on it? So we're gonna see, you know? It's still very new to me. We're gonna see how it holds up and we're gonna put it through the paces and see what happens. I mean, the belt, you know, that could have been anything. I did the break in, you know, by the manual, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit. I'm gonna break out the manual and we're gonna read the break in procedure. So anybody that's curious, um, you know, you'll know exactly what Polaris recommends for a break-in. Hey guys, important to ensure long product life. It is very important to follow proper break-in procedures. See your owner's manual. Here we go, guys. Here is the owner's manual for the Scrambler XP1000S. Let's dive right into it. Here we are. Engine and drivetrain break-in. Fill the fuel tank with gasoline. See the fuel tank section for details. Always exercise extreme caution whenever handling gasoline. Check the oil level. See the oil check section for reference. Add the recommended oil as needed to maintain the oil level in the safe operating range. Drive slow at first. Select an open area that allows room to familiarize yourself with the vehicle operation and handling. Avoid aggressive use of the brakes. Vary throttle positions. Do not operate at sustained idle pull only light loads. Perform regular checks on fluid levels, controls, and areas outlined on the daily pre-ride inspection checklist. During the break-in period, change both the oil and filter at 25 hours or one month. I have already done that at about 10 hours. Check fluid levels of transmission and all gear cases after the first 25 hours of operation and every 100 hours thereafter. Okay, so here we go. PVT break-in clutches belt. A proper break-in of the clutches and belt drive drive belt will ensure a longer life and better performance. Break in the clutches and belt by operating at slower speeds during the break-in period as recommended. Pull only light loads. Avoid aggressive acceleration and high, sp high speed operation during the break-in period. If a belt fails, always clean any debris from the PVT intake and outlet duct and from the clutch and engine compartments when replacing the belt. There you have it, guys. That is in the manual here. So that was just for reference for you guys. Maybe some of you don't have a manual. Maybe some of you are wondering, 
what they have in this manual for a break-in. Well, you guys just seen it firsthand. There it is. I know everyone has a different thought on that. You know, you should do, oh, the first thousand miles nice and easy. You know, everyone has something different to say about it. Um, but, you know, the truth of the matter is, my previous videos, obviously I wasn't happy. I spent $15,000 on an ATV that broke down twice with under 100 miles. I mean, it was just not what I was expecting. You know, I still love the machine. Completely happy with the purchase. Don't regret it one bit. You know, if I could go back and pick a different machine, I wouldn't. I would still get this one, 100% all day. I mean, this thing is, this thing's radical. It's crazy, it's fun, it's fast, it's powerful had a couple incidents whatever that could just be that you know i got unlucky because there's a lot of people out there driving these things real hard you know if not harder than i am and they have had no problems yet this is still a new machine so it could have just been that you know mine had a couple couple weak components the axles are all new you know this is a 55 inch width these axles are brand new for this year maybe i just got one that was weak who knows as far as the belt goes you know i don't know i can't tell you Everyone's saying it's because I don't use low gear enough, but guys, I'm out here in the wide open. I'm cruising along. I mean, right now I'm only doing 30, 35 because I'm breaking in the belt. Normally when I'm out here, I'm chasing the side-by-sides. We're doing like anywhere from 40 to 60 miles an hour through these power lines and through the pits. There's no need for low gear out here. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm not doing any intricate mudding or hill climbing where there's rocks and you have to crawl up it real slow. No, if I'm going up a, a sand pit hill, I'm going up that hill at 40 miles an hour, the same speed I'm ripping through the pits. I'm not gonna stop at the base of the hill, put the machine in low, just to slowly climb up the hill, stop at the top of the hill, put it back. No, come on guys, That's you think this machine was built for that? It wasn't, okay? This thing should be able to handle anything that's thrown at it. So we're gonna see guys, this is, it's still brand new really. We're at like 100 miles. Not even, 90 something miles. Still a brand new machine. We're gonna break this belt in properly again. And we're gonna just, you know, we're gonna keep using it. We're gonna be starting to go up to, uh, go up to the White Mountains in New Hampshire. We got some trips planned. You know, it's been rough with the whole quarantine thing and the COVID. Speaking on that, I hope you all are doing well and staying safe and healthy. But uh, they're gonna be opening up the trail systems up there soon probably next month and we're gonna get up there for a weekend we're gonna probably do a hundred miles a day through the mountains nice open logging roads group like you know perfect well-kept trails it's gonna be awesome we're gonna review the trail system too um, and we're just gonna be doing a ton of riding this year guys but let's get back on this and keep breaking in that belt and uh, you know just having fun out here because that's you know that's what we're here for guys we're all we all ride to have fun I make these videos specifically for you guys. You know, I don't have to come out here and film, but I like to do it so that way, you know, you guys can learn about this machine um, and just kind of, you know, enjoy what I do out here riding and putting this thing through the paces. You know, because a lot of people are going to wait. A lot of people are going to wait to buy this. It's a brand new machine. A lot of people are going to wait till next year and, you know, get some feedback on it. People that bought it initially, like I did how it's holding up, um, if they're gonna change anything. Personally, I don't think they're gonna change much, especially next year. Maybe in a few years, but there's really not much to change on it. They might do the LED headlights. I think that might be it. We'll see though. That's just, you know, that's just my thought on it. But let's get back on it.
we're gonna cross this one real quick. throttle to full real quick so you guys can hear the big difference because um, I've only been quarter to maybe not even half throttle this whole time so I just I wanted you guys to be able to hear it so you can distinguish the difference in my video because I know the I know the uh, the break-in police they'll be saying oh you're going way too hard on the throttle nope not even close check this out guys This is what's ruining this place. That's a condom. Young kids are coming out here and destroying this place for everybody that actually uses it, respects the property, and just rides. Guys, there's trash everywhere out here. Pieces of debris, metal. This is dangerous for the people that ride, first of all. Second of all, it's just straight up disrespectful. If these kids want to come out here and have fires, that's fine. If they would keep it contained to just a normal bonfire, they'd probably be able to continue coming out here without any issues. But this guy, this is what's going to get this place shut down in a hurry. I don't know what is wrong with kids nowadays, man. Let's ride. So guys, we're gonna climb that hill right there. I'm gonna probably go up it at about 30, 35 miles an hour, and I probably won't even crack quarter throttle.
up the hill at about 40. Drop down to around 10 for the top. No strain on anything. It's nice and easy. Kind of just floating right up the hill. Let's hit some of this trail here. Change the scenery a little bit. It's kind of cruising along nice and easy. Hey guys, so real quick, I just want to thank you all because we completely destroyed that goal of a thousand subs. Um, I think I said we could get there by June. It's not even May, guys, and we are well past a thousand subs, so thank you all so much. I appreciate you sticking around the channel. Um, let's set a new goal. I think that would be the next best thing to do. Let's go for 2,500 subscribers by the 4th of July. I think that that might be... That might be possible, we'll see. So if you're new to the channel, if you love riding like I do, and uh, you wanna watch riding videos of a lot of different places, Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Vermont, might even try to check out Connecticut a little bit, New York. I'm gonna be going everywhere, guys, so if you're new, subscribe. It's gonna be a fun year of riding, that's for sure. And I'm going to let you guys know all about this machine here. As I have been. I make these videos for you guys, like I said. I mean, you know, I'm out here riding. I, I don't need to be filming. I do it for you guys. I love making the videos, don't get me wrong. But I want you guys to be able to uh, see how this machine is. Learn about it. Maybe you're buying one soon. 
and you want to see how they are get some reviews on it that's what i'm doing for you guys and also trail systems like i'm going to be riding maine like i said um i go up to jericho to the state park a lot so you guys will get to see all the types of riding and different spots where you can ride and uh you know maybe i'll even see you out there on the trails we're just out here having fun we're just riding enjoying the outdoors and the uh you know the machines it's fun guys we love this um comment down below guys let me know what you ride i know there's tons and tons of people i know i'm gonna keep getting these comments should have bought a can-am should have bought a can-am i've been there i got buddies with can-ams brand new ones they have problems too guys no perfect machine out there but yeah comment down below let me know what you're riding out there quick shout out to troy power sports in troy new hampshire awesome dealership guys if you're in the market and you're in the area go check them out they were a pleasure to work with buying this machine um, they've already helped me immensely they got me an axle that broke at around 70 miles you can go check that video out and uh two weeks ago they got me a belt replacement that went at about 80 miles and you can also go check that video out but yeah guys um with that being said i'm gonna cut this right here hey guys i'm back to this real quick let's just crawl through it in low four-wheel drive i haven't done any like water crossing videos or mudding so let's just do this one real quick i don't know how deep it gets or whatnot uh it doesn't look too bad but let's just slowly get through it here for you guys uh, we're in low, we're in all-wheel drive, let's get it. Okay, not bad, not bad. Alright, it's getting a little deep. I don't know, should I turn around now or keep going? I don't have a winch and I'm out here alone. I think I'm going to turn back. kidding guys let's get it see I had you all fooled you know that you didn't think we'd go for it that's funny I got through it that was some deep stuff right there my goodness guys I thought that was just gonna be a puddle that was a straight mud hole my gosh hold on I gotta take the GoPro off so you guys can see this I was not expecting that at all guys well that was my first experience going through some mud on this thing um wow i really was not expecting that at all guys like i legit thought it was going to be like a foot of water we were well up to here in mud. That was pretty crazy. I hope the camera caught all that. I don't ride 
ride mud, guys. You know this. I do sand pits. I like to ride fast. I didn't want to get soaked. Literally drenched in mud. This is crazy. Because, guys, see, most of the puddles around here, like this one, I probably should have went through. It's, it's probably just like a foot of sand at the bottom, you know? I mean, like a foot of water with sand at the bottom. I don't know. This, this one caught me by surprise. That is just a straight mud pit. I should have went with my gut initially and not did it, but it was fun. I can say it was fun. Unfortunately, it's not the warmest day here today. I'm freezing cold now. My boots are completely filled with water and mud. Uh, everything kind of is completely muddy and dirty, so... With that being said, guys, I'm going to get out of here right now. I'm going to go home, get this thing washed up, and uh, not do that again next time. <laughs> but uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed that, be sure to smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. We're going to be doing tons and tons more videos, guys. Um, and yeah, I'm going to cut this here. Peace. This thing is dirty, guys. Filthy. If I brought those home, my wife would have killed me.